Hello again. We are in the home stretch. Only two speeches left, both of them persuasive speeches. So, same format as the last couple speeches, same structure. We're going to add a few embellishments, which I'll discuss in just a few minutes. But you're going to pick out a topic to try to persuade us about. A good way to pick a topic is to ask yourself, what do I want to change in the world? What do I not like the way it is? The theme for this speech is making the world a better place, either in terms of the way we treat each other or the way we treat the planet Earth. So, making the world a better place. If you ask yourself, what do I really hate? I hate, there's a topic. And if you can't think of a topic on your own, in the assigned reading in the ebook, there's a list of about a hundred topics that my students have used over the last few years. All kinds of topics to choose from if you can't come up with one on your own. And for this, as with the ones before, you're going to have to do research. Now, some things to be aware of. If you choose a controversial topic, or one that involves science to any degree, you're going to have to use very recent material, nothing older than two years of publication. And there are things to watch out for when you're putting material together, when you're trying to find things that you can use. There's an acronym that helps you figure out how to choose appropriate material. The acronym is C-R-A-A-P, CRAAP. When you're looking up material, is it current? Is it recent? Is it up to date? And is it relevant? Does it actually apply to what you want us to know? And also, is it authoritative? That is, the people that put the information out there, do they have the credentials? Are they recognized experts in this field? So, is it authoritative? And, is it accurate? Do we know that the facts in it are correct? Accuracy is important. And finally, the purpose that it was put out for the world to use in the first place. Why was it put out there? Was it put out there to convince people? Was it put out there to sell something? Was it put out there to convey a particular point of view? As you go looking through material, you're going to have to watch out for one thing, confirmation bias. In confirmation bias, we, will, we tend to look for things that support our point of view. That's normal. If you choose a topic for which there's only one real side to the argument, like being against human trafficking, that's pretty easy to find material that supports your point of view. You can't find material in favor of human trafficking. But suppose you're looking at material on something like GMOs, or steroids, or even decorating too early in the season, long before Christmas arrives, for the Christmas holiday itself. There are two sides to all those arguments. Which one is going to make the world a better place? You can look up some really convincing material on either side of those arguments. Does it correspond to these details? Does it correspond to this type of protocol that shows you that it's worthwhile? Be cautious when looking up information that supports your point of view. Within confirmation bias, we tend to be blind to really valid material that we should address. If, in looking up your information, you find something that is convincingly against your point of view, then cite it, state it, and tell us why you think it is incorrect. But to do that, you're going to have to need logic and reasoning and more facts to put forth your point of view. So these are some of the basic things to be aware of when you create a persuasive speech. There's going to be one difference between the speech you do for this week's assignment and the one for next week's assignment. The difference is for next week, I need for you to create PowerPoint slides. And that might seem like a silly thing to do for an online course, but it's crucial when you want to learn public speaking because people need and expect visuals. If you can convey all your information just by you standing there, great. But there's an expectation in a lot of environments, a lot of businesses, a lot of classes for visuals to go along with it. And there is an entire science, and I do mean science, to creating slides that are impactful and memorable. I'm going to talk more about that in next week's lesson. So this week, no PowerPoint. Next week, yes PowerPoint. And for the PowerPoint next week, you don't necessarily have to project it on the wall. 
most people taking this course online don't have that kind of resource. But if you happen to be on the college campus and you see an empty classroom with a projector and a computer and nobody else is using it, there is no rule that says you can't go in, log into the computer, plug in your flash drive, open up your slides, project them on the screen and use that. So if you have that resource, if you're going to get to the campus, consider doing that. It will certainly impress the instructor. But that is for next week. For this week, we're just doing persuasive speeches. So now that we've talked about some of those basics, let's move on and discuss logic and reasoning.